Webster's Dictionary defines curse as a prayer or invocation for harm or injury to come upon one. But the definition of curse for sports fans is a supernatural reason why my team is so trash. A curse gives fans and players the opportunity to overlook poor performance, management, or organizational problems. Whether it's a trade that happened 70 years ago, or some off-field incident that happened 70 years ago, curses and superstition have been and always will be a part of sports. So let's look at the curses placed on sports teams in America, and more specifically, the ones that were the most credible. Totally sports-esque. Major League. Let's start in Major League Baseball, where superstition and curses seem to be the most prominent. We'll start with the most famous curse in not just baseball, but also all of American sports, that resulted in the longest championship drought. The story of the curse comes from the year 1945, which was the last time the Cubs made the World Series before 2016, and where the curse was placed. At Game 4 of the World Series at Wrigley Field, despite having paid box seat tickets, tavern owner Billy Cianis was kicked out of the game, along with his pet goat, after complaints of the noise and odor. Outraged, Cianis declared the Cubs will never play in the World Series again. There are differing reports about the exact nature of what was said. Some say Billy meant no World Series games would be played at Wrigley. Some say he meant the Cubs would never play in the World Series again. Cianis' family claims that Billy wrote a telegram to team owner Philip K. Wrigley saying, You are going to lose this World Series and you are never going to win the World Series again because you insulted my goat. The Cubs would have multiple incidents that added to the curse after, including a black cat running in front of the dugout during their collapse in 1969, Leon Durham letting a ball go through his legs in the 1984 NLCS, and of course the Steve Bartman incident. Numerous attempts to break the curse were implemented, including bringing a goat to Wrigley and other fields, hanging a butchered goat head from Harry Carey's statue, bringing in a Greek Orthodox priest to spray holy water in the dugout, and other city and even worldwide campaigns were undertaken. But the plots to reverse the curse were no longer needed after the Cubs finally broke through to make the World Series and win the World Series in 2016, ending a 108-year championship drought and ending the 71-year curse placed on them by a GOAT. The second most famous curse in baseball and possibly all of sports is the curse of the Bambino, placed upon the Boston Red Sox. The curse is derived from 1920, when Red Sox owner Harry Frazee sold Babe Ruth, also known as the Great Bambino, to the New York Yankees. The Great Bambino! Prior to this, the Red Sox were the most successful team in the league, winning five World Series, with Babe Ruth being a big part of three of those. Though the sale happened two years after the Red Sox 86-year drought began, Ruth moving to the Yankees marked a changing of the guard in the league. Babe Ruth would become an American phenomenon, and the Yankees would emerge as the most dominant team in baseball, winning 27 World Series after this. And as for the Red Sox, decades of struggle and misfortune began. They would appear in four World Series afterwards and lose all in seven games. They would suffer heartbreaks like Enos Slaughter's Mad Dash, Bucky Dent's home run, Aaron Boone's walk-off home run, and most famously, Bill Buckner letting a ball go through his legs in Game 6 of the 1986 World Series. The curse wasn't really brought into the light until four years after Buckner in 1990, when a book entitled The Curse of the Bambino was released by Dan Shaughnessy. It became a part of Red Sox lore and popularized the term and curse. And just like Cubs fans, Red Sox fans would try to reverse the curse by any means, such as burning a Yankee cap at the base camp of Mount Everest, finding a piano Babe Ruth pushed into a pond at his Massachusetts farm, bringing in the official witch of Massachusetts, and graffitiing a road sign. But finally, with the help of David Ortiz's anti-curse rhetoric, the Red Sox would be the only team in MLB history to come back from a 3-0 deficit against the Yankees in the 2004 ALCS. Then they would break the 86-year curse and drought by winning the World Series in 2004. For the next curse, we're going back to Chicago for the curse of the Black Sox. Interestingly, the White Sox drought started one year before the Red Sox and ended one year after the Red Sox drought. And the supposed curse also started one year before the curse of the Bambino began. 
1920, the White Sox were hit with a huge blow after many top players were hit with suspensions late in the season as of the fallout of the Black Sox scandal. For those not familiar with the scandal, eight members of the White Sox were accused of throwing the 1919 World Series on purpose for money. And after a public trial in 1921, these eight men were permanently banned from professional baseball and consideration for the Hall of Fame. There's no telling if the White Sox would have won the World Series in 1919 or won the pennant race with these eight players in 1920. But with the rise of the Yankees and Babe Ruth, the White Sox fell out of contention quickly. They would only make the World Series once from 1920 to 2004, and that was in 1959 where they lost to the Los Angeles Dodgers in six games. The White Sox would end their long drought and break the curse after a sweep in the 2005 World Series. The media played up the supposed curse during the coverage of the series, and players referenced both their curse and the Red Sox curse as motivation. Some are skeptical of this curse as just being played up by the media to help with the ratings for the series. Like those who don't believe in superstition or curses, many fans blame the drought on mismanagement of the team caused by the Comiskeys being cheap owners. Either way, the supposed curse and drought came to an end 88 years later. Chicago. The next curse is the only curse in baseball on here that is still going on. This one is the curse of Rocky Calvito, granted upon the Cleveland Indians slash Guardians. The incident happened in 1960 when fan favorite Rocky Calvito was traded to the Tigers for Harvey Ken. While Ken was a good pickup, many fans felt betrayal from the new general manager Frank Lane, who traded many top players on the team he inherited and traded Calvito mainly due to contract demands. Lane would only last one more year as the GM. The supposed curse didn't come into light until 1994, when just like The Curse of the Bambino, a book was released. In this book, Terry Pluto argues that this trade led to a 34-year stretch where Cleveland didn't finish within 11 games of first place. And in this stretch, there were many misfortunes from injuries to off-field incidents to terrible front office decisions. And to further expand on the trade of Calvito, on the day he was traded, the Indians and the White Sox played an exhibition game at Rustward Park in Memphis, and after reporters found out about the trade and the game ended, four hours later, Rustward Park was destroyed in a fire. The Indians would make the World Series three times after the book was released, but lost each time, including losing on a walk-off in Game 7 of the 1997 World Series and blowing a 3-1 lead against another cursed team, the Chicago Cubs, in 2016. There is also rumor that then-manager Bobby Bragan walked to the mound in 1958 and placed a curse on the Indians saying they would never win another pennant. Bragan has denied this ever happening, but nonetheless, Cleveland currently has the longest championship drought in the MLB and all of American sports. The last curse in baseball was placed on the San Francisco Giants and became known as the Curse of Eddie Grant. Though the incident occurred in 1918, the curse didn't start until 1958. In 1918, former Giants third baseman Eddie Grant was the first Major League Baseball player killed during World War I. Three years later, in 1921, the Giants honored Grant by putting a plaque of him in center field. With the plaque in center field, the Giants won four of their five World Series while in New York. But in 1957, when the Giants played their final game at the Polo Grounds and in New York, fans invaded the field following the game, and the plaque of Eddie Grant was lost in the midst of it. Upset fans in New York placed a curse on the Giants, saying they would never win the World Series again as all their luck was in New York. And over the next 51 years in San Francisco, the Giants would lose the World Series three times. Meanwhile, the Dodgers, who lost 11 World Series while based in Brooklyn and won only once, would have five titles in this time. The Giants were approached many times about replacing the plaque, but refused because they wanted to keep the team separate from their time in New York. But in 2006, Giants management decided to develop a new plaque. It took two years to be installed after production problems, but in 2008, the plaque was installed on the tower in right field. And just two years later, they would end their 56-year drought by winning the World Series in 2010, and adding two more championships within the next four years. We begin in the NFL by talking about a franchise that seems to be more cursed than maybe any other franchise in sports, and that's the Detroit Lions. 
While the 60 plus years have been brutal for the Lions, believe it or not, there was a time of glory for the Lions and that was in the 50s. The Lions won three NFL championships and they did so with arguably the greatest quarterback in Lions history, Bobby Lane. He made the Pro Bowl four times as a Lion and led the league in passing twice, and as mentioned, won three championships with the team. But in October of 1958, Lane was traded to the Steelers for Earl Morrell and two draft picks. Though there is no definitive proof as this quote was never printed, Bobby Lane reportedly said the Lions would not win for 50 years. And whether he actually said this or not, the Lions did go on to not win for 50 years. Of the 12 teams in the league as of 1958, since then, the Lions have had the worst winning percentage. They have only won one playoff game in their 13 appearances, and along with the Browns, are the only team from this time to not play in the Super Bowl. And to add to this, if Bobby Lane did make this statement, then 50 years after the trade, the Lions became the first team in NFL history to go 0-16. And that same year, the team Lane was traded to, the Pittsburgh Steelers, won their sixth Super Bowl. And just three years earlier, the Steelers won their fifth Super Bowl at Ford Field in Detroit. And to add even more, the quarterback the Lions took first overall the next year, Matthew Stafford, he went to the same high school as Bobby Lane. And he even lived in a house on the same street as Bobby Lane did. And unfortunately for the Lions, it's clear this curse has lasted longer than 50 years. But things do look promising with their current core and head coach. And Peyton Manning did his part in helping to lift the curse by performing a chant over a tub of whiskey and salt as a reference to Lane's drinking in the end zone at Ford Field in 2022. This alleged curse belongs to the Philadelphia Eagles and dates back to 1960. Throughout Vince Lombardi's famed career, he coached 10 playoff games and only lost once. And that was to the Philadelphia Eagles in the 1960 NFL Championship game. Lombardi would never lose a playoff game again, and that included three NFL championships and the first two Super Bowls. After Lombardi suddenly died of cancer in 1970, the Super Bowl trophy was named after him in his honor. And due to the trophy's namesake, Eagles fans came to believe that Vince Lombardi cursed the franchise after giving him his only playoff loss. And the Eagles were not meant to win a trophy named after him. And the theory was given further proof by the many heartbreaks the Eagles went through after this time that included losing two Super Bowls and three straight NFC Championship games. But that was all laid to rest when this man helped the Eagles defeat Tom Brady and the Patriots to hoist the Lombardi Trophy 57 years after giving Lombardi his only playoff loss. And interestingly, the Eagles championship drought lasted just as long as Lombardi's memorable life. This one is more of just an internet theory one, but many Jets fans and others think Joe Namath sold his soul for the Jets to win their only Super Bowl in 1969 and then cursed the Jets from then on. The justification for the curse comes from how confident Joe Namath was going into Super Bowl III against the Colts, despite being 19 and a half point underdogs. He told the press before the game that he guaranteed the Jets will win. I think we got a heck of a shot of winning. We beat anybody in the world and I think we're going to win next Sunday. And well, he was right. The Jets would beat the Colts 16-7 and Joe Namath would win Super Bowl MVP. But after this, Namath's career declined mainly due to injuries and as for the Jets, they have yet to reach the Super Bowl since. They have had a losing record since and they have led the league in butt fumbles since. The Superdome curse, of course, was placed on the New Orleans Saints. The belief in the curse comes from the fact that many believe the Superdome where the Saints play was built on a cemetery. The dome was actually built near the Gerard Street Cemetery, but not on it. Nonetheless, with the team's poor play through the first few decades, in 2000, an actual voodoo priestess with a boa constructor around her neck led the crowd in a purification ritual before the team's playoff game against the Rams. And well, the Saints actually ended up winning their first playoff game that day. While the Saints would go on to win the Super Bowl in 2009, any alleged curse on the Dome was exercised when the Dome became a place of shelter amidst Hurricane Katrina in 2005, turning the Dome into a hollow ground much bigger than any alleged curse. The last curse in the NFL is probably the most famous, and that's the Madden curse. Starting in the year 1999, instead of having John Madden on the cover of the game, players started appearing on the cover. And while appearing on the cover was an honor, 
Many started believing in the curse when multiple players suffered injuries or declines the year after appearing on the cover. That includes the first ever cover athlete, Garrison Hurst, who missed two full seasons after. Dante Culpepper throwing nearly more interceptions and touchdowns before a season-ending injury, Michael Vick injuring his leg in the preseason, Donovan McNabb getting hurt in the first game of the season, and many other examples. Players such as Vince Young and Peyton Hillis expressed skepticism about appearing on the cover due to the curse, and fans have lobbied for their favorite players to not appear on the cover. And that includes Ladanian Tomlinson, who was initially supposed to appear on the cover of Madden 08. And the website SaveLTFromMadden.com was created to protest. Tomlinson later declined the offer, but said it was due to contract negotiations. Despite many believing in the curse, many attribute the curse to the physical nature of football that has caused injuries. And there's the fact that many who have appeared on the cover would go on to have great seasons, such as Calvin Johnson in 2013, who set the single season receiving yards record, and Tom Brady in 2018, and Patrick Mahomes in 2020, who both ended up winning the Super Bowl that year. We begin in the NHL by talking about the curse of 1940 place upon the New York Rangers. The year of 1940 was a big one for the Rangers, as not only did they win the Stanley Cup, the mortgage on their home arena of Madison Square Garden was paid off. To celebrate, the management of the Madison Square Garden Corporation burned the mortgage in the bowl of the cup, and to put the fire out, members of the Rangers peed on the cup. With the Stanley Cup being considered a sacred object, many believe the hockey gods punished the Rangers for desecrating the cup. And in this time, the Rangers also had Dutton's curse placed on them. Red Dutton was the coach and GM of the New York Americans, and after the NHL decided against reviving the franchise after World War II, an upset Dutton vowed the Rangers would never win the cup again in his lifetime. And he actually was right, as Dutton passed away in 1987. And the Rangers wouldn't break the curse of 1940 until 1994, when the Rangers ended their 54-year Stanley Cup drought. In celebration, Rangers fans chanted 1940 as the Rangers were presented with the cup. The next curse was placed upon the Chicago Blackhawks and became known as the Curse of Muldoon. Pete Muldoon became the Blackhawks' first ever coach in 1926, but after the Blackhawks lost in the first round against the Boston Bruins, team owner Frederick McLaughlin fired Muldoon. In 1943, sports writer Jim Coleman wrote that the reason for his firing was a heated argument between McLaughlin and Muldoon at the end of the season. Muldoon disagreed with McLaughlin about the Blackhawks being able to finish first, and due to this disagreement, Muldoon was fired and responded with, Fire me major, and you'll never finish first. I'll put a curse on this team that will hoodoo it until the end of time. Finishing first in that time was considered as much of an achievement as actually winning the cup. And though the Blackhawks won three Stanley Cups in this time, they didn't actually finish first until 1967, 23 years after McLaughlin's death. Later on, Jim Coleman, who initially wrote the story, said he made the entire thing up to end a writer's block he had with a deadline approaching. Though we've covered American teams in this video, this next curse belongs to Canada, and it's known as Canada's Stanley Cup Curse. And this comes from the fact that despite having seven NHL teams in Canada, none have won the Stanley Cup since 1993, when the Montreal Canadiens won. Much of this has to do with the expansion of the NHL and the Sun Belt, making it harder for Canadian teams to win it all. Even with the expansion, Canadian teams did make the Stanley Cup final six times in this period, but lost each series, including two against original six teams with long droughts, and three against teams a part of the NHL's Sunbelt expansion. Two Canadian teams failed to make the finals in this time, with the Winnipeg Jets and Toronto Maple Leafs, who some feel are cursed themselves, as they haven't made the Stanley Cup finals since 1967 one year before the NHL expanded past the original six, making them the only team in the original six not to do so. The final curse recovering in the NHL belonged to the Calgary Flames. This curse began after the Flames won Game 3 of the 2006 Western Conference quarterfinals against the Anaheim Ducks in Anaheim, at the then-named Arrowhead Pond. After this, the Flames lost a record 29 straight games in Anaheim, with 27 of those in the newly named Honda Center. 
Of these 29 losses, 7 of those came in the playoffs. Ducks fans even taunted the Flames by chanting, You can't win here. And the chant at Honda Center right now, You can't win here. The chance in the streak would finally end on October 9th, 2017, when the Flames beat the Ducks 2-0 in Anaheim, bringing an end to an insane 11-year losing streak at one arena. There aren't many prominent curses in the NBA, but one that happened and became popular because of the internet was known as the Base God's Curse. The curse started in 2011, when Kevin Durant insulted rapper Little B on Twitter, questioning if he was actually relevant. In response, Little B placed a curse on Kevin Durant, stating that he would never win a championship. He resigned this curse a year later, but reinstated it in 2014 and released a KD diss track. When Durant signed with the Warriors in 2016, Little B once again resigned the curse, and this is probably because it was obvious that Durant was going to win a title with this super team. Little B also cursed James Harden after he alleged Harden stole his cooking dance during the 2015 season. After Harden did not make a response, Little B officially put the curse on him, and with Little B in attendance, Harden set a playoff record with 13 turnovers in the same game that the Rockets season ended. Little B officially lifted the curse on live TV in 2017, but Harden has still not won a title. The next curse is another one discovered by the internet, and that's the King's Curse. Prior to the year 1952, the Kings, who were then known as the Rochester Royals, were one of the best teams in the National Basketball League, making the championship twice and winning it in their first season and in 1951, two years after the merger that gave us the NBA. But from 1952 until now, things have not gone well for the Kings. They have made terrible draft picks, played terrible basketball, and were victims of perhaps the most blatant missed calls by refs in NBA history. But what the theory is getting at is the Kings franchise was at its best before 1952, when King George VI held the throne. But with his passing in 1952, Elizabeth II took the throne, and the Kings franchise went downhill. They haven't made the finals since 1951, have the longest championship drought in the NBA, and the second longest in all of American sports. But with the passing of Elizabeth II in 2022, the Kings ended the longest playoff drought in NBA history that season, and currently have a very bright future ahead of them. So this theory could become more believable in the future. The next curse ties in with our next category. If there is an NBA team besides the Kings that seems absolutely cursed, it's the Clippers. With their long history of disappointment, a theory that could explain it is where the team was founded, Buffalo, which is the first cursed city we will talk about. The Clippers were originally founded in 1970 and were known as the Buffalo Braves. They made the playoffs a few times in Buffalo before they moved to San Diego, a city that just like Buffalo has never won a championship and then controversially moved to LA under the guide of disgraced owner Donald Sterling. Some felt the franchise was cursed by Sterling running the team, but unfortunately the bad luck followed them as Sterling stepped down. Perhaps the Clippers' misfortune can be blamed on Buffalo's long history of an inability to win a championship in the four major leagues. The Buffalo Sabres have made the Stanley Cup Finals three times and lost each one and the Bills famously made the Super Bowl four years in a row in the early 90s and lost each time. Some have blamed Buffalo's misfortune on Highmark Stadium being located next to a family cemetery, and likely on the site of an old Wenro Indian village. But a much older explanation is that former president William McKinley was assassinated in Buffalo, and from then on, Buffalo sports have been plagued with disappointment. The next cursed city is one we discussed earlier, and that's Cleveland. Cleveland sports fans are well aware of the numerous disappointments throughout the last five decades, and those disappointments were actually record-setting. After the Browns won the NFL championship in 1964, the city went 147 seasons without winning a title. Of course, that 52-year drought came to an end when the Cavaliers made a 3-1 comeback against the Warriors in the 2016 Finals. And ironically, the Indians would blow a 3-1 lead in the World Series that same year. Aside from the curse of Rocky Calavito that supposedly cursed the Indians, there isn't a known supernatural reason for Cleveland's drought, other than that's just how things go in Cleveland. It could be worse though, at least we're not Detroit! We're, we're not, not Detroit! Detroit! 
but much of the drought can be blamed on mismanagement and poor performance in both the regular and postseason. That gave the city unfortunate moments like the drive, the fumble, the shot, the catch, the decision, and the 0-16. Unlike Cleveland, the next city's curse is one they blamed on a supernatural reason, and it's another city we've already talked about, and that's Philadelphia. This curse was known as the Curse of Billy Penn. In 1987, the one Liberty Place skyscraper was built, and this broke a decades-long gentleman's agreement that no building in Philadelphia approved would rise above the William Penn statue on City Hall. Many believe this was the reason Philadelphia sports teams were unable to win a championship for decades after the 76ers won the finals in 1983. All four Philadelphia teams lost in the championship during this period, and ten times teams lost in the semifinals. With the curse being widespread in Philly, and some suggesting that it caused the rude behavior of Philly fans in this time, after the final beam was raised during the construction of the Comcast Center in June of 2007, two workers attached a small William Penn figure to the beam. Then just one year later, the Phillies broke the curse by winning the World Series. When the Comcast Technology Center was topped out as the tallest building in Philadelphia in November of 2017, another William Penn figure was placed upon the highest beam. Then a little over two months later, the Eagles won their first Super Bowl to break the Lombardi curse we discussed earlier. I grouped the last three cities together, Atlanta, Minneapolis, and Washington DC, as they all face incredible droughts that aren't entirely blamed on supernatural reasons. The most similar here is Atlanta and Minnesota, with both having competitive teams that couldn't win it all in a variety of heartbreaking ways. For Atlanta, it took 29 years for the city to win their first championship, and that was when the Braves won their first World Series in Atlanta in 1995 against Cleveland. While the Braves continued to compete nearly every year in this time, including 14 straight division titles from 1991 to 2005, the 1995 World Series was their only championship in this time. They made the World Series again in 1996, but after going up 2-0, they lost four straight against the Yankees, then lost another four to the Yankees in 1999. The Braves would continue to have heartbreaking losses through the first two decades of the 21st century. Meanwhile, the Falcons joined them in the heartbreak. The Falcons and the Braves got their start in 1966, but unlike the Braves and just like the Hawks, the Falcons never won a championship. And that includes perhaps the mother of all chokes, with the blown 28-3 lead against the Patriots in Super Bowl 51. If there's a quick overview of Atlanta sports heartbreaks from this time, then it can be seen in this picture. But the curse would come to an end when the Braves won the World Series in 2021. And just a few months later, Georgia would win the national championship. For Minnesota, unlike Atlanta, their supposed curse is still going on. After the Twins won the World Series in 1991, Minnesota sports teams have not made it to another championship. The Timberwolves only made it to the conference finals once where they lost, the Vikings lost three NFC Championship games, Minnesota lost the North Stars to Dallas and gained the Wild in 2000, who made the conference finals only once since. And the Twins currently have the longest playoff losing streak in all of sports history. And altogether, Minnesota is currently tied with Buffalo for the most seasons without a championship at 117. It should also be noted that Minnesota closed the gap in 26 last years. As for Washington DC, they were also victims of a long drought after the Capitals made the Eastern Conference Finals in 1998. DC sports teams didn't make a conference championship for 70 seasons. That includes 16 quarterfinals losses and 13 losses in a row where teams had a chance to make the conference finals. The 20-year conference championship drought and 26-year championship drought ended in 2018 when the Capitals won the Stanley Cup. The last curse we'll cover is one that covers all of American sports, and that's the famous Sports Illustrated curse. This curse stems from the numerous examples of players and teams having injuries and poor performance happen to them after gracing the cover. This started when Eddie Matthews broke his hand after appearing on the first ever cover of Sports Illustrated. 
And just like the Madden curse, there are many contradictions to the curse, including Vince Young and Emmett Smith appearing on the cover then winning the championship. And the 2014 cover that knew what was coming when the Astros won the World Series in 2017. An explanation for the curse is that athletes and teams usually appear on the cover in the midst of a hot streak, and the appearance may occur at the end of this. And there's also the natural physical nature of sports that leads to injuries. And this also could be the explanation for almost all of our curses. For those who don't believe in such curses, then much of these curses can just be explained by coincidence. And the logical reason here, which is just mismanagement and poor performance in both the regular and postseason. But for those who do believe in curses, when the inevitable heartbreaks ensue every year, it's nice to have something to fall back on that explains why your fandom has brought nothing but pain. And when the day comes where the curse is broken, it's a day tortured fans will relish until the end of their time. <laughs>